Welcome to the Bob Balance HealthCast, episode number 340. Birth control can protect women from certain cancers for decades. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Moffat and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Moffat's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Moffat's office is currently accepting new patients. New research has been released from the University of Aberdeen. Uh, four decades of accumulated data with over 46,000 women tracking them over a 30-year period. In the UK. In the UK. Uh, and what they, they have released, what the research concludes, is fascinating new information about the risk of birth control and cancer. Right. And the benefit of taking birth control pills, which many yes. of us... That it diminishes your risk. That's right. It decreases your risk of yeah. getting three cancers. Yes. I mean, amazing. That's, yes. I mean, that's, to me, that's justification for basically suppressing your own wild ovarian function because that's when we get excessive growth of cells and excessive estrogens and excessive other hormones and then calming them down with birth control pills or... I think it extends to replacing hormones to keep your body from just doing its thing as we go through menopause. So it's hormones, it's estradiol, it's progestin, and those two things added to your body don't hurt you. Well, what they concluded from the research is they tracked these women over basically a lifetime, especially their productive years and after, Mm -hmm. reproductive years and after. Uh, And they said that if you have ever taken birth control pills, for any length of time, and then stopped, that you still got the benefit Mm -hmm. of a 20% reduction, between 15 and 20% for three different types of cancer, 20% for colorectal, around 15% for endometrial and ovarian. And endometrial is uterine cancer, the lining of the uterus. So you are 20% less at risk of ever getting it in your lifetime simply because you took the birth control pills. They also said for those women who took the birth controls at least uh, birth control pills at least five years, who were not smokers when they were taking the birth control pill, mm-hmm. had a reduced risk of lung cancer. That's amazing. So it's uh, it's astonishing stuff. And and it took us my my entire career. Yes. Of giving writing birth control pills for people for birth control, but also sometimes I wrote them to stop excessive bleeding or decrease the size of ovarian cysts to tell us that not only is this safe, right, but it's beneficial. It has a hidden benefit. So all of those fear things that they threw out, I mean, it's so scary to know that something is safe and then have uh, media or whoever or yeah. people who just don't want you to take birth control pills or something to throw out all these fearful kind of thoughts that make people not do what they should do. You know, like prevent pregnancy with birth control. I mean, birth control pills are not dangerous. And not only are they not dangerous, they are preventive. Yes. Three cancers that are very, I mean, ovarian cancer is not very common. So a 20% reduction, reduction of that is, risk huge. is huge. And it's a deadly cancer. Endometrial cancer, on the other hand, is much more common. But it is something that we can treat by a hysterectomy, usually. Mm-hmm. So those two cancers are GYN cancers in my field. Right. But colon cancer, which I have no control over, that's something you have to get a colonoscopy for to, to prevent it, to right. see if you may have an early stage. That is decreased as well, which is amazing. It's a cancer you don't want. Mm-hmm. So just by preventing pregnancy with birth control pills, and I know that not everyone can tolerate them, but most people can, and most people have taken them. That means this generation, people that are 60 and below, are, I mean, basically we started taking the pill in the, so, in the 1970s. So this research doesn't identify it, or, or if it does, I'm not smart enough to recognize it. You may know. Uh, you said some women can't take birth control pills. Mm-hmm. Can they take instead something like Norvasc, the implants? 
Is oh, that the, that's not Norvast. That's a blood pressure pill. But um, um, yeah. yeah, Norplant. Norplant. Norplant is that, yes, I can take Norplant because it doesn't have any estrogen in it. Some people respond to oral estrogen badly. Right, right. Um, and we can, and we used to put in uh, Norplant, which is just progestin. But this study doesn't it look It doesn't look at, at that. For, for one thing, Norplant hasn't been around for 30 years. Right. Uh, but it would be intriguing to find if any of the things that work as birth control devices or agents. That work hormonally. Because Norplant that work hormonal. The Norplant is a hormonal yes. suppression. Yeah. So uh, it uses progestin under the skin, kind of like what we do with pellets, but it's it doesn't dissolve completely. It's in plastic, mm -hmm. and it's in a little tube under your skin or tubes that it secretes slowly. This Good progestin. For four or five years. Right, and yeah. it just and it and it suppresses your own hormones. Right. So my, instead of having estrogens that surge every month at ovulation and and may not be balanced by a good progesterone level, we just have this causes women to have a very low estrogen level. Now there's problems with that. Mm -hmm. Having Norplant would not be as good as birth control pills because birth control pills have estrogen which would would cause your bones to thicken. This suppresses any estrogen and brings estrogen very low, and therefore many more women on Norplant would get osteoporosis. So, I mean, in the future, not while they're on it, mm -hmm. but it would thin their bones to begin with, and when they hit menopause, and, and if they didn't replace their estrogen, they would have a, an early osteoporosis. So there are some side effects that are negative to uh, birth control that doesn't have estrogen in it. but. There are women who carry a genetic risk for blood clot, so blood clots. So if you have that genetic risk, the type of birth control you should take does not involve oral estrogen. Right. So you would use a marine IUD, mm -hmm. which is progestin <coughs> in an IUD, or you would use Norplant because neither one of those should increase your risk of blood clot. So... What we don't know, this, this research is brand new release of a long-term study of, mm -hmm. of a cohort of women. Mm -hmm. And we don't know about things like Norplant because right. they just did oral mm -hmm. birth control. But there are two paragraphs in the report that I would like to read, if you will indulge me. So all things considered, the team reported there was no evidence to suggest that women who had ever used blood control pills saw new cancer risk later in life. While results indicate that the crucial medicine had instead offered certain cancer protections. Thus, they determined the overall balance of cancer risk among past users of oral contraceptives was neutral with the increased risk counterbalanced by the endometrial, ovarian, and colorectal cancer benefits. So that, that's pretty impressive and exciting news. It, these are deadly illnesses, and if you can, by taking birth control pills, experience a 20% increase in protection against that or reduction of the disease yes it, it's just phenomenal but you know what they didn't say and everybody has said oh well if you take estrogen mm -hmm. you're going to increase your risk of breast cancer now they don't okay. say anything about breast cancer no they don't say anything. however about cancer, if it increased the risk uh -huh. i mean they were gathering data on every cancer right if it increased the risk they would have said that mm -hmm. it's so it's neutral basically it doesn't do anything so let's jump forward to women taking estrogen for menopause. Mm -hmm. We know, because the studies we follow and we've seen, right. that estrogen itself, does, th when you're taking it, does not cause breast cancer. Right. If you have a breast cancer that's fed by estrogen, which means the cancer cells are quite different than regular cells or normal cells. So if you have that particular type of breast cancer, okay, we don't give you more estrogen because it might feed it, but we're not certain about that. I mean, they, we just logically think, oh, there's receptors, so right. we're not going to give you estrogen. But in the future, it's very possible that we'll be able to give some estrogen in a different way, not orally, but in right. a different way to people who have breast cancer. That's not out yet, and that's, those studies are still ongoing. But... We know that birth control pills, oral estrogen, which is the riskiest type of all estrogens, does not breast increase cancer. breast cancer. Right. So when you go off your birth control pill, you go on, you go on postmenopausal hormones, 
you're not increasing your risk of breast cancer. Okay. I mean, there's so many That's other things yes. that increase your risk of breast cancer, like obesity, which diabetes, um, uh, sorry, uh, immune problems where, that you take immune suppressants for, mm -hmm. like, like um, rheumatoid arthritis or lupus, and then you take Humira. Well, that increases your risk of breast cancer and every other cancer. The so, estrogen doesn't, no. but the Humira does. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, there's so many things that we say, oh, she got breast cancer because she took hormones. That's not my experience. My experience is that if you don't take any hormones, any, like just if you don't right. take this, right. any, any birth control pills, right. you don't take any hormones for any reason, that your risk of having a deadly breast cancer is higher. And the studies show that. So, but you've actually treated women who have histories of breast cancer. Yes. And given them hormones. Yes, I've given them testosterone. Mm -hmm. And that's a done deal. Testosterone is fine. It does not have anything to do with breast cancer except it might suppress it. Mm -hmm. And I have given people who have had mastectomies and low stage cancers estrogen later at, at the five year mark. And they, they can take it if it's not oral. What What is it about taking it orally? Is it the blood-brain barrier issue, or do we know? No, no. I mean, we want estrogen in our brains. It makes us f sleep better, and it makes us not have hot flashes. However, it, it has to do with oral estrogen can turn into estrone, old lady estrogen that comes from the adrenal gland, comes from fat, and can come from the from the metabolism of oral estrogens in some women. So if they've already had breast cancer, they may be somebody who makes a lot of estrone. Mm -hmm. So sometimes that would make a cell that's already there stimulated. Okay. Come. But if we're sure they're gone, it's gone. Yeah. Then we get, we give estrogen. We can give estrogen to those folks. Okay. So these are things that you've learned and that you know that aren't related to the this study article. information. Right. This, this article is talking uh, about the specific benefit to women from taking oral birth control pills as a protective or preventative for increased cancer risk. The, the study goes on to say these results from the longest running study in the world into or oral contraceptive use are reassuring. Specifically, pill users do not have an overall increased risk of cancer over their lifetime and they have a protective effect from some specific cancers, the three specific ones we're talking mm -hmm. about, for at least 30 years after they've taken it. So awesome. Th that's just fascinating news. 30 and, and, years is a long time to be protected by something. And, and I think it's important for an additional reason, because in the United States, at least, there are uh, politicians who are aggressively working to limit women's access to birth control for moral or religious reasons of those politicians and their supporters. I would like to have this information put on the pile so that maybe those people could consider if I have a chance of decreasing the risk that my wife or daughter will get cancer in her lifetime by having this birth control pill, even if it has nothing to do with her sexual behaviors, right. just the fact that it's a preventative protecting uh, device uh, against the increased risk of cancers I'd like to have the chance to think about that and to have my wife or daughter make that decision for themselves. None of these things should be legislated. Uh, this I is agree, a, a, patient's, a patient and her doctor's job to decide on a treatment. It should not be legislated. But also, there's another benefit of birth control pills that, le that legislators never think about either, and that is that <clears throat> in this country, young women are at a disadvantage in junior high and high school after they start menstruating. Mm -hmm. I mean, they may be in more of a disadvantage in other countries, but in this country this is the only thing I know about. They are at a disadvantage because they have, their bodies haven't matured enough. When they go to school and they have a period and they have a menstrual cycle, they may have terrible pain. They may have terrible, uncontrollable bleeding. That's common in young women when they're trying to get their, their bodies trying so to adjust. Yeah. So what happens is these women don't participate in school as much. They have more absent days. They can't 
compete with the men. They can't compete with the boys. Yeah. So what happens is that they're behind the eight ball every month. They're out of school two or three days. That is not a productive way to spend your time. And they and can't miserable. compete. Yeah, and they feel terrible. Right. But I, I tried to advocate to moms who of the women I'm taking care of, the young girls that I'm taking care of, right. that they they want their daughters to be equal, not the same as men, but equal to men in comp competitive ways, mentally and, and emotionally, then they needed to allow them to take birth control pills. Not because I advocated them having sex. It's because yeah. I am trying to give the girl the same same level playing field yes, that, that playing field. women should have in this country and that we've worked really hard in the 60s and 70s to get it. We haven't really achieved it. And now we're making our daughters at a disadvantage because we won't put them on the pill because of religious reasons or other reasons. Right. They should have that chance yeah. to be able to go to school every day, just like the boys do, and have the same number of, of absent days. And most girls will go, I don't want to go to school. But really, the ones that are competing and really want to do something with their lives, they need that chance. Well, so you're saying there's a medical reason to consider putting them on the birth control pill based on what you've always known and always done. And now this research adds additional medical considerations to, to put in your thinking. Right. And for me to sway a, a mother, yeah. you know, the, the saddest mothers that came into my office when I was doing OBGYN were the mothers that were staunchly religious and refused to put their daughters on birth control pills, and then they were a grandmother when their daughter was 16. Yeah. You know, Or their we, family had to deal with the tragedy of an abortion. And, right. And In my practice, that, that didn't yes. happen as much. Um, I, and if it did, I didn't know about right, it. Right, right, right. But, but they had to deal with adoption. They had to, I mean, there is no good answer to an unwanted pregnancy. Right. There's just none. The only way you can combat that is to prevent it. And that's, you know... If something were to happen, kids make mistakes, they're immature, they have wild raging hormones, they, you know, things happen, you can protect them from that. And even if you believe your daughter's a perfect child, she may be, but she may make a mistake or have a lapse of judgment. She might get assaulted. That's true. And she might get assaulted. So to avoid all of, I mean, you never get over that either, but it's much worse if there's a child created yeah. That she, way. She might go to work for Bill Cosby. Shh. Oh, my gosh. Do I have to retape? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this is this is my plea for equality for, for women. And, and I've always been the advocate for my patients to have equality. I mean, I think it, I said yesterday on a radio show, I think it's wonderful that we can have children. I think it's wonderful that we have the job of having children for society, but I don't think that we should be uh, negated because of that. We should be able to still have the same brains as men and, and do the same jobs I do. So, I mean, that's what I think women should have the option to do. But men, men always say, oh, gosh, I would never have a pregnancy. That would be terrible. I would never go through the delivery. Yeah, yeah and that's why we do. Because yeah. we have the instinct because we love our children. So I, I, we we don't mind sacrificing a little bit of ourselves for that. I love my children too, and I sacrifice in a different way. I don't want to sacrifice in that way. Right, and we're we're our brains and bodies are made for that. So we're not the same, but we should have the same opportunities. Yeah. And it's always people talk about that, but it doesn't always happen because of our reproductive lives. The pill makes it more even and gives us an advantage. Well, at, at the end of the day, the, the point of this discussion is to tell you that there is new research, the longest running consistent cohort uh, in history studying oral birth control. And it brought serendipitous new news about the risk of cancer as a surprise benefit from taking birth control orally. So you should know that. Factor it into your thinking. Don't your be afraid anymore. Yeah. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin.
and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.